Now, a group of about 2,000 migrants, mostly from Central America, have started their journey from southern Mexico to the U.S. border with hopes of gaining entry, though that crowd has grown, according to a lot of the reporters there on the ground. Uh, some managed to push past a line of police officers trying to stop them, but they were able to continue on with their trek. And Joe Khalil is live in Washington with more on this caravan. Again, uh, Joe, I'm hearing that there are as many as five or 6,000 migrants there journeying in, but this group seems to be different than others, and, and it's gaining even more attention. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Adrian. And we can put this in a historical context here. Um, you know, typically what we see are surges like this that happen in the cooler months. So in the spring or in the fall, and the White House is actually saying that this uh, goes right on track with some of those historical trends. The problem with that is that we've already seen about 1.7 million migrants come to the U.S. southern border just this year alone. That is a record. And actually the highest months that we've reported were in July and August when we had close to 200,000 in each month in the sweltering heat. So that certainly doesn't track historically, makes this a little bit different of a situation. Now, take a look at what we're seeing uh, just over the weekend. This group basically blew right through a uh, border of Mexican police and security forces uh, in riot gear. Um, and as you mentioned, the numbers, uh, there's different reporting. Some estimates are 2,000, uh, some are even higher than that. A larger group. Now, the leaders of this migrant uh, caravan have said that their ultimate goal is to get to Mexico City, not to the United States, and they want to uh, get humanitarian assistance there. Of course, there are some reporters on the ground that are talking to some of these migrants who say that they do ultimately want to make it to the United States. These people are coming from Central America, South America, some even from Haiti. Uh, so what we know is that if they do end up reaching the U.S. border, uh, the Biden administration is actually set to uh, re-implement a Trump-era policy Policy, the remain in Mexico policy, and that is expected to happen at some point in November. So anybody who uh, does make it to the U.S. border this time and tries to apply for asylum legally is going to have to remain on the Mexico side of the border. But another group adding to these record totals we've seen this year, certainly something uh, to keep an eye on. Adrian. Joe, I think the biggest uh, thing here is that noticing the tone, the attitude of those who are here uh, making their way to the U.S.-Mexico border. In, in previous instances, it seems as though it's this very desperate group just looking for safety. And there are some of those in that group, but this is much more more well organized, as you were mentioning, uh, and they were shouting things such as libertad, uh, liberty and freedom as they marched through Mexico. Thank you so much, Joe. We appreciate your reporting. Well, I would say a couple of points. One, Mexico needs to do more. Not only, you know, we saw that with the Haitians, but obviously we see this with a caravan. As they break through a security checkpoint, as they did in, in Chiapas, the Mexican government needs to be allocating more resources to make sure that they are staying in parts of the country uh, that they should stay while their asylum process or their visa is being uh, applied for. And that's the law in Mexico. And so as they break the law and they come through checkpoints, obviously the Mexican government's got to do more. But look, at the end of the day, the Mexican government is also very upset with the Biden administration. They're upset with the policies, the asylum uh, regulations and, and everything that the, the Biden administration has pulled back because it's making it more difficult for them to do their job at the end of the day. So I think the, the current administration, the Biden administration, has got a real problems on its hands, not only working with the Mexican government, but with other governments in the region. They are concerned about what they're seeing and about this, the, these caravans and this mass migration. It's because of the 
pull factors. It's because of the, the messaging and the policies of this administration. I was on the border yesterday working with both the Texas National Guard as well as the Texas Department of Public Safety as we are preparing for uh, the, the potential arrival of this caravan, understanding this, and that is the Biden administration is AWOL. The Biden administration has abandoned any pretense of securing the border and has left it only to the state of Texas to step up and to secure our own border. As a result, we have thousands of National Guard as well as uh, Texas Department of Public Safety officers, including Texas Rangers, uh, making sure that we are providing the resources we need to secure the border, as well as Texas is in the process of building a wall, as well as making arrests of people coming across the border illegally and trespassing in the state of Texas. That said, what we expect to be able to do, if you go back a couple of weeks ago and you saw the number of people coming across Del Rio, uh, we formed a human barricade to prevent those people from coming into the state of Texas. We are identifying locations where these other caravans may be coming to for that same purpose of trying to cross the border at low water crossing areas. And we are working to barricade those areas as we speak right now. In the Rio Grande Valley, border crossings start well before sunrise. It's 4.30 a.m. and state troopers have just intercepted a group of migrants. These men and women have just crossed the border illegally. Mexico is a few hundred meters away. In Valverde County, border crossings happen daily but surge during the weekend. Okay. This family is from Venezuela. They traveled by bus through seven countries to make it to the U.S. Miriam Nunez is the eldest. The 61-year-old traveled with her son, his wife, and their four children. It was her idea to come to the U.S., so she thanks God they made it safe and sound. The other people in the group are also from Venezuela. Just a few hours ago, they didn't even know Miriam and her family. They met on the Mexican side of the Rio Grande, and cross the river together. There are 15 and apparently it's a total of maybe 50, I want to say. And they were saying the rest of the group, they just kept walking that way on the river. So I don't know if the other two got them. They, they, got, they got them all. OK. After arrests are made by state troopers, Border Patrol takes over. They count the children, single men, and families. And they take some first safety measures. In South Texas, most law enforcement agents speak Spanish, and they're often from immigrant families themselves. A few bags is all these migrants have from the country they left behind. They're taken to a processing center where their asylum application will be reviewed. A scene all too familiar at the U.S.-Mexico border even more so since Joe Biden took office. A new, and we're told highly organized, 3,000 person strong caravan is blowing through a Mexican police blockade currently. It already did through one over the weekend. This is we are getting an inside look at an operation to arrest illegal migrants in the United States, or just illegal immigrants. Bill Malusian in Spofford, Texas, embedded with the Texas DPS troopers and a special ops group. Bill. 
Harris, good morning to you. We are currently about 40 miles inland from the border right now where we are with DPS waiting for trains to come in from Mexico heading into the United States that are typically loaded up with illegal immigrant runners who try to get away from state troopers. Here's what we're talking about. Take a look at these photos from yesterday Texas DPS gave us. This is a typical day in the woods out here for them when they're out here arresting these migrants who are hitching rides on these trains. Uh, yesterday they had about 20 or so. Take a look at this piece of video uh, from earlier this year, earlier this summer, this is what they're typically dealing with. These runners, these are the people who are not turning themselves in and claiming asylum. These are people who are trying to get into the country, get deeper into the U.S. and are running when DPS is trying to arrest them. It is only DPS out here. There's no border patrol. And these state troopers are out here every day scanning these trains once they come in looking for these runners. Or you'll see this one piece of video. Sometimes they're running on the top of trains trying to get away. But uh, take a look at this piece of video. As we were driving up here yesterday, we saw DPS pulling somebody off. Uh, to the side of the road. It was a human smuggler, had several illegal immigrants inside of the vehicle with him. Some of the adult males in that car were dressed in camouflage. That's typically what we see with the runners, but that's a very common sight when you're driving out here in border towns in Texas. You'll see smugglers pulled over on the side of the road all the time. Uh, earlier today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott blasted President Biden for never visiting the border down here to see what his policies are doing. Take a listen. There is no documentation whatsoever of Joe Biden ever being to the border, especially for a fact during his time as president. Uh, and so he is ignoring the area where he's caused the greatest crisis. Uh, and this is exactly why his polling numbers are plummeting so badly, even among Democrats in South Texas. And Harris, we just got word from DPS. There is a train heading towards us right now about a half mile out. This one is heading north. It's coming in from Mexico. We're going to wrap this up and go over with DPS, see what we find on that train. They have made more. They've made several thousand arrests out here ever since July. We'll send it back to you. Film Illusion, always great reporting. Thank you for that first eye view. This Thousands of migrants storming through a blockade of Mexican security forces. Some carrying pro-Biden banners as the caravan sets their sights on entering the southern border. Here with reaction is Texas Congressman Pat Fallon. Pat, thanks for being with us this morning, uh, first of all. So, okay. It's 1.7 million southwest border encounters. That's just for fiscal year 2021. That's the most ever on record. And then you hear that this uh, caravan of 3,000 are coming towards the southern border, you know, with these Biden banners. What, I mean, what gives? They're pushing through security. I mean, this could get extremely dangerous for our border agents. No, Ashley and Todd, thanks for having me on. There's no doubt. This is not a this is not a crisis. What's happening on the southern border? It is a catastrophe. I've been there several times this year, and it's not getting better. It's getting worse. The mainstream media is ignoring it. This is the first time on record we've had seven months in a row of over 170,000 illegal border crossings on a on a monthly basis. And what Joe Biden has done is made it, every state in the country is now a border state. I get the sense that these migrants are acting like they are somewhat entitled to come to the U.S. How responsible is Joe Biden for creating that sense of entitlement? I think he bears the responsibility wholly, and that's one of the reasons why, Todd, he's not wanting, he doesn't want to visit the border. They don't want to talk about it either. I mean, the last time he just admitted through his press secretary, the last time he came to the border was 13 years ago. We're on pace right now to have 2 million folks cross the border illegally. We've just added the entire state of West Virginia into the country, and we're allowing other nation states to export their poverty into this country. President Trump had an America first policy. It looks like Joe Biden has an America last policy. Right. And Congressman, we, we've also heard about, um, you know, the drug cartels and, and those people breaching the border. But um, I, I do have to say, when, when it comes to the issue with the border and the president and vice president not visiting the border just to see what's happening, Kamala Harris is going to Europe, um, but she's not going to the border. What does this show to these people coming to the southern border? It, it, it just seems like it's a free for all for them. And they know well, that. Ashley, it's a great point. You remember, like, J. Edgar Hoover used to ignore the mafia in the 50s and 60s until, you know, he just couldn't do it any longer. It's like what uh, President Biden is doing with the Mexican drug cartels. He's ignoring them. They're incredibly powerful. They have the power of a nation state. 
Their GDP is something between on the low end 15 billion and then the high end 50 billion. And to put context to that, we have NATO allies, nation states like Estonia, their GDP is 32 billion. Latvia yeah. is 33 billion. That's how much power. And we can, we have the means to secure the southern border, but Joe Biden lacks the will. Meantime, it seems like walls work, at least for Joe Biden's beach house. Take a look at this. You're paying for this. About $457,000 of your taxpayer money going to pay for a fence at Joe Biden's Delaware home. Why would he cancel a fence to make us all safe, but build a fence to keep himself safe? Well, that's just uh, typical liberalism, right? I mean, the limousine liberal. Joe Biden protects himself, but let's 10,469 pounds of fentanyl. That's enough to kill 2.3 billion people, or every American, about seven times. Cocaine and methamphetamine is also on the rise. And the drug cartels are controlling our southern border, as I said before, when half of our border agents are babysitting, changing diapers, and administering COVID tests. It's a lot easier to smuggle those drugs, isn't it? Meantime, Congressman, we have about a minute before we have to hand it on off to Fox and Friends. Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, saying Americans have not experienced current inflation rate in a long time. We've been playing that soundbite throughout the course of the show. Don't have time for it now. If this administration is aware of what is going on, why aren't they doing more to stop it? Again, 45 seconds to you, Congressman. No, thank you. Uh, listen, so, Todd, they're saying that inflation is at 5.6 percent. Really, fuel's up 42 percent. Uh, used cars cost 24% more than they did. Food across the board is 12%. Your homes cost 13% more. And bacon costs 19% more. That is a travesty. <laughs> Every American. And they, they, they're they committed to a leftist, uh, le leftist policies that are appeasing AOC and the rest of the socialists in Congress to the detriment of the American people. And I'd like to point out, not making a joke about this, it is literally two months until Christmas right. when I think everybody spends a little yeah. bit more, they're really going to feel that pressure. Yeah, it's it's not looking too good. Okay, uh, Congressman Pat Fallon, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless. So a little less than an hour from now at 9 o'clock, sentencing begins in the trial of an illegal immigrant whose actions led to the death of a Nassau County Sheriff's deputy. Francisco Portillo Fuentes pled guilty to aggravated manslaughter in the 2016 death of Nassau County Sheriff's Deputy Eric Oliver. Oliver was killed when he ran out into traffic in pursuit of Portillo Fuentes. Fuentes now faces up to 12 years in prison. News for Jack's reporter Corley Peel is live this morning. You know, Corley, I actually covered that so many years ago. Hard to believe we're still talking with, about this. There's still a sentencing, and we do expect to hear from Deputy Oliver's father. We do. He is expected to make a statement today, and I spoke with Deputy Oliver's father back in June, and he says he feels like he can finally move forward and get justice after all of these years. Now, investigators say Bortillo Fuentes is from El Salvador and was in the U.S. illegally. He had previously been deported twice. In November 2016, he was one of five men in a pickup truck that was pulled over by Border Patrol. Deputy Oliver and others showed up for backup, and Portillo Fuentes took off running. Deputy Oliver and another deputy chased after him. During that pursuit, investigators say a car hit Oliver on A1A, killing him. The judge decided to drop Portillo Fuentes' second-degree felony murder charge and escape charges. A motion to dismiss the manslaughter and resisting police charges were denied. The judge says Portillo Fuentes' decision to run across traffic contributed to Deputy Oliver's death. Now, Deputy Oliver, he leaves behind a daughter. She is 11 years old now at this time. Again, his father is expected to be here at the hearing this morning. That hearing starts at 9 a.m. Reporting live from Nassau County, Corley Peel, Channel 4, The Local Station. A new massive organized caravan of migrants storming through a blockade of Mexican security forces. Look at that. As they make their way north toward the United States. Thomas Feely is a former ICE field office director for Buffalo, New York, and he joins us now to react. Good morning to you, Thomas. Good morning, Ainsley. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. This doesn't surprise you, does it? We don't expect them to follow the law. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. And, you know, as long as the door remains open, they'll continue to come. And what's really shocking about this caravan is they're already demonstrating that they don't obey the laws of where they're currently at. So there's no expectation that they'll obey our laws when they get here. What happens when they do get here? 
Well, the only response that I'm aware of by DHS is to detail people to the border from ICE and CBP, but they're not there to stop it or close the border or do any type of law enforcement action. They're only there to help process these people and get them into the country quicker. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know what DHS is doing. I don't know where our vice president is, but obviously uh, an open border is what they wanted, and it's mm -hmm. an open border is what they got. They're complaining because they're seeking asylum, and they're saying their applications are not being processed and all of the appointments are full. They're heading to Mexico City. We're being told about 4,000 of them. Do you expect them? I mean, they're carrying American flags. They're wearing Biden T-shirts and holding up Biden signs. They're heading for the U.S., aren't they? Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see if uh, any of them there uh, wear Let's Go Brandon shirts because that'd be really funny. But <laughs> yeah, they're going to they're going to keep coming um, as long as the border remains open and unsafe to all of us here in this great country. They're going to keep coming and they're going to keep coming and they're going to keep coming. Where's the leadership? We're not seeing Kamala Harris going down there anymore. Joe Biden has never been down there. What about the head of ICE or the head of CBP? What do you know about them? Well, they're both unqualified for their positions, in my opinion. They were both chiefs of police, which, uh, you know, as honorable as that is, that does not prepare you to lead one of the largest law enforcement agencies in the country. Both of them have backgrounds in being anti-ICE and pro-open border. So, you know, this is just a tragedy that's going to keep playing out. And this is by design. This is what this administration wants. And, you know, as far as a lack of leadership, you know, people are asking, why aren't they at the border? Because this is going exactly as planned by them. So there's no reason for them to go down there. It's really sad that morale is low and uh, CBP and ICE are just getting their butt kicked every day. Why, why aren't we seeing Kamala Harris going back down there? She's heading to Paris, I know, in November. And many people are scratching their heads saying we need her to stay here and deal with what's happening on the border. Well, if you think about it, Ainsley, this is what she wants. This is all by design. So she really doesn't have a need to go to the border because she's not going to go down there and, you know, rally against her own administration's policies. This is what they wanted. And, uh, you know, now she's going to go over to France, I believe. Maybe have some tea and crumpets in England, yeah. stop over, say hi to everybody over there. But this is just ridiculous. Some madelines and macaroons, right? Thank you so much for being on with us, Thomas. You're right. Other cools down across the desert southwest, U.S. Border Patrol El Centro sector says more activity along the U.S.-Mexico border is taking place. News 11's Wiley Jahari joins us from El Centro with an update. Yeah, that's right. Even as we head into the winter season, U.S. Border Patrol tells me that they expect more illegal activity along their borders as temperatures continue to drop. In the El Centro sector, we continue to see an increase in apprehensions. Uh, currently, we're at a 33 percent increase uh, when compared to the same time period of last fiscal year. But it's nothing unexpected. Especially with the weather cooling down, uh, the activity tends to, to pick up uh, during nicer weather. And recently, Border Patrol came across a white delivery vehicle uh, that was uh, suspicious in nature. Um, it had characteristics or it was exhibiting signs of, of possibly uh, having human smuggling uh, um, patterns. Border Patrol says eight undocumented individuals were in the back of that vehicle. And the Hakuba Wilderness area still proving to be one of the most dangerous paths for those trying to cross. The Hakuba Wilderness region continues to be our most active uh, zone at this time. And Border Patrol says that the majority of apprehensions along their borders continues to be Mexican nationals. They are also seeing individuals come from Brazil and Venezuela. I'm Wiley Jahari reporting in El Centro. Back to you. And Vice President Kamala Harris still has no plans to head back to the southern border, but she is committed to jetting off to Europe mm. next month. Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, here to discuss her lack of engagement as the migrant crisis grows by the day. Joe, looks like Kamala's working on that old bucket list. Remember this? Do you have any plans to visit the border? We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Well, congrats to her for checking Europe off there. But, yeah. Joe, will she ever go to the actual border? And by the border, I mean the places that Griff Jenkins goes, Bill Malugin goes. 
Oh, you mean like uh, La Jolla or Del Rio? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you'll see that the same time you see the Detroit Lions in the Super Bowl, who put up a good fight against the Rams they yesterday, did. by the way, Todd, they as did. you probably saw. Uh, look, th this is the administration that is polling in the 20s in terms of its handling of the border. Absentee landlords, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, who, and, and the numbers back this up, by the way, in terms of the record number of migrant crossings that we're seeing this year, they have zero interest in tackling this issue. This is the look like you're working administration when you're actually barely working. Kamala Harris, like you just pointed out, has never actually been to a border town. And that includes Arizona, by the way, where, where the, we're seeing the biggest surge right now. Joe Biden apparently drove through El Paso in a motorcade 13 years ago, and the White House press secretary, with a straight face, mind you, says that counts as a visit, which is insulting to anyone's intelligence over the age of six. So, yep, have fun in Europe, uh, because we have a crisis at the border. We also have a supply chain crisis going on where you won't see the president or the vice president or Secretary Pete Buttigieg visit a port city in Los Angeles, New Jersey the Gulf Coast, Savannah. So, again, we have an administration that is being outworked at this point by people trying to solve problems that don't have remotely the amount of power that they do at this point. Okay, so we have to get to this. Uh, obviously, President yeah. Biden is facing some falling poll numbers, but even SNL is picking up on it. Let's take a watch at this, and we'll, we'll talk to you on the other side. All right. Your CNN town hall was watched by no one, and your approval rating is in the dumpster. Ooh, I don't understand. People used to like me. I miss the old me. <laughs> Where the hell did that guy go? <laughs> hey, wait a second. Who are you? Who am I? What do you mean? Who I'm you. I'm you from eight years ago, man. The ghost of Biden passed. Boom! <laughs> How can you be me? You seem so happy, so yeah. carefree. So, so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Lucid. Yeah. Okay, so other than hysterical, like, what is, what's your take on SNL even throwing jabs at the Biden administration? Mm, Ashley, I, I, I wonder if we use the word jabs there. I, I, this is as gentle as a, a butterfly landing on a tulip in terms of their mocking of Joe Biden. But it does show you, however, how far the president has fallen in terms of polling. You see Zogby, he's at 36 percent. You see Quinnipiac, he's at 37 percent. And we're only 10 months into the administration, and that's with very favorable press coverage. Uh, I'm actually surprised there wasn't a staff walkout over doing a skit that actually jabs at Joe Biden. Meanwhile, did you see the end? of the show. I, I know, I, look, at my age, I, I can't stay up that late, but I, I did see the clips. After performing for 90 minutes on stage without masks, the fully vaccinated cast, they put their masks back on. Talk about virtue signaling. So that, that's SNL at this point. They go after Joe Biden, kind of, but it's not with the vitriol that we saw with the former president, played by a guy who, uh, you know, a, a very tragic thing happened uh, on that set of Rust with Alec yeah, Baldwin. Yeah, yeah. And I, I hate the fact, by the the way that people on online and, and on social media are somehow using this to attack Alec Baldwin. It was a horrible thing that happened. Uh, he made a, a horrible accident mistake, but let's not start attacking people because there is a woman that died here. At the Texas-Mexico border, a number of migrants are speaking out, saying their constitutional rights have been violated. Sunrise reporter Victoria Balderrama, she joins us now live in the studio with more on how Governor Greg Abbott is responding to those claims. Victoria, good morning. Good morning, and Governor Greg Abbott's press office says the state of Texas is investigating three billion in, in investing three billion in tax dollars on border security and blames the Biden administration for quote ignoring border communities. In June, Abbott ordered the arrest of migrants on state trespassing charges if they are found illegally crossing the border. So far, Texas law enforcement has detained around 1,300 migrants. Lawyers say many have been held in prisons without actually being charged and without legal representation. Attorneys say in some cases, some people have disappeared and their families couldn't find them. Because charges hadn't been filed against them, there was no official record in the clerk's office that they were even, that they even existed. 
In a recent legislative committee hearing, the Texas Defense Commission testified 155 people were arrested and went weeks without counsel. And while Abbott announced he wants to arrest criminals, over 1,300 men have been arrested on suspicion of criminal trespassing. The attorney whose legal aid group represents about 560 of them testified many of them are asylum seekers. State officials say they're now meeting regularly to make sure those arrested get counsel in a timely manner, and public def defenders say they will continue to look into accusations made by migrants. Reporting in the studio, Victoria Valderrama, Chris Six Sunrise. A lot of times I thought maybe that Donald Trump was, was uh, you know, something that, uh, that he didn't like immigration, but he actually wasn't as cruel as the Biden administration is. I don't even think they care about this issue. People make you hope for a better life, and they, they, they crush you down. The organizer of a new migrant caravan heading towards the U.S. calls out the Biden administration, <clears throat> but the new caravan, along with record-breaking border encounters and 2021, are still not enough to get the president or his vice president to take a trip to see the crisis for themselves. Here to react is Canyon County, Idaho Sheriff Kieran Donahue. Kieran, thanks for being with us this morning. And before we dive into this, um, I just I want to pull some of these numbers really quickly. Um, Mark Daniels, he's a sheriff in Arizona. He said that this fiscal year, they had 10,000 pounds of fentanyl, 180,000 pounds of meth, and 86,000 pounds of cocaine come through the southern border. Now, that is just the, the numbers, you know, obviously there's marijuana numbers, but those were the numbers that really struck me um, as incredibly dangerous. So walk us through what this looks like when these drugs enter the U.S. from the southern border and what could happen when these cartels pretty much set up shop with the people that have made their way here. Well, thank you. And, and Sheriff Daniels is correct. It's and what we concentrate, we, we see the big numbers of people coming across what they call the encounters, but it's the getaways that you really need to focus on because the getaways are the people carrying the, the majority of that of those illegal narcotics. Once it once the cartels figure out that and have figured out that uh, we have these crossings and, and all the, our resources are are concentrated, then it's, it makes it far more easy for them to uh, get through covertly through the border, and once it gets across the border, like in, in Sheriff Daniels uh, County, Cochise County, there's safe houses, there's safe drops, there's uh, all kinds of intricate, complex uh, uh, maneuvers that the cartels will do. Then once it's across, it's just got to get into a vehicle, it's got to get it, whatever that may be, and it's got to get moving north. It could be moving north up the Pacific uh, North Highway, it could be moving up through I-10, it's going to go into the interior states, and it gets to a state like mine, over a thousand miles away from the border, from Mark. And then once it gets to my area, their their complex net complex network that's already established here, it's moved from here to Kentucky, to Boston, to uh, New York, you name it. It's it's moving through the interior of the United States. So, will those people? Do you think they will ever leave, or do you think they are here to stay for good? Well, they they. Are here to stay for good, and they have been here for literally decades. We've been in this battle for for longer than most of us can remember, and this is not new. It's not new to law enforcement. It's certainly not new to Sheriff Daniels and myself, who have been on the front lines of this for for many years. And unfortunately, they this, this has just boldened emboldened them to do more. Every single person that comes across that border, there's a cost to getting across that border, and the cartels are extracting that cost, whether that's in cash whether that's in promised money, whether that's in indentured servitude to the cartels. These people can get across there uh, and put in categories. And then once they're in the United States, they're shipped out to places like Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, they name a few. And then they're indentured servitude, basically slave, slavery to the cartels to pay off the debt for getting them across. And the victimization that goes along with that, especially if you're female, is astronomical. It's very heinous. Obviously, they're they're put into sex trafficking rings, and that's all part of the human trafficking and drug trafficking smuggling that the cartels are are uh, operating under. Right. And I don't think I mean so, you know I don't think some people really understand. Not only is it you know the COVID issue that I feel like you don't even hear about anymore, but now it's it's the drugs, it's the it's the smuggling, it's it's all of that. Um, I'm not going to have time to play this soundbite for you, but basically, um, Jen Psaki, the press secretary for uh, President Biden, she defended him, saying that he once made a drive through to the southern border 13 years ago. Is that good enough? 
It's absolutely not good enough. It's a ridiculous statement. It's a ridiculous stance to be on. And it's, it's appalling that the president of the United States would take that, that path and, and her to protect him or to defend him is, is inexcusable. And quite frankly, why, why isn't the president down there? Why isn't the vice president down there? And to make that courtesy move that she, she made some months ago is, again, ridiculous. It's a slap in the face of the people of America. It's a slap in the face certainly to law enforcement and cousins of border protection that are secure trying to secure our border on the southern southern end and of course the northern end too that we have to worry about and and for the people in the interior it's just it's just ridiculous right okay sheriff donahue thank you so much for your take on that this morning we appreciate you getting up early with us thank you appreciate mm -hmm. it yep let me let me turn to the border because, Congressman, I know you've been there. We were there three times in the last two years, and we've watched this situation worsen quite significantly. Now we are expecting another massive organized caravan of migrants. They're making their way to the southern border right now, surging past Mexican forces, trying to stop it over the weekend. The organizers calling out the Biden administration, saying that money is not going to solve the problem. Um, we're, it's unclear what they want. I have an exclusive story this morning uh, that I've learned that cartels are paying teenagers, 15, 16 year old kids, $1,000 for every migrant that they can drive to Houston. So you've got these teenagers with cars back and forth from the border to Houston all day long. And we have one situation where there was a teenager apprehended this weekend. Uh, and, and his car went, out, went over a ditch, tipped over. Here's a shot of it. Uh, in this truck, he had 13 illegals jammed in the back seat. He was going to make $13,000 uh, until he was apprehended by the sheriff's office. We're going to talk with the sheriff of Jackson County coming up. But, I mean, look, you're talking about these Mexican cartels with this organized plan to now entrap teenagers through TikTok. Your reaction? This is, I mean, it's unbelievable that this is going on, but it does bring up a couple of problems. First of all, we've got to do something about the internet. I don't want to. I've made that clear to, to everyone that we've had before us on the Energy and Commerce Committee. I don't want the government to have to intervene here, but they're giving us no choice. They won't do it themselves. Zuckerberg, Dorsey, none of them will do it themselves. So therefore, we're going to have to do it in the Energy and Commerce Telecommunications Subcommittee. And we've been talking about it and we are proposing we, we've got proposals out now the way that we're going to control this i only wish that the biden administration were as organized as the cartels are i mean they, they run like a well oiled machine whereas the biden administration yeah, yeah they're organized they're just saying we're not going to do anything at all except reverse the trump policies that's the only reason they're yeah. doing this is because they want to do it just the opposite when in reality, they could control the border and secure the border if they were just to put the Trump policies back into place, build the wall, stay in yeah, Mexico policy, Title 42, all of those yeah, things. Unfortunately, the Biden administration canceled all remaining contracts for the border wall construction. And last week, he lied to the American people again and said that he was at the border, which, of course, we know that's never taken place. He has never been in, to the border uh, in his 50 years in government. Um, he, the White House press secretary said that he flew into El Paso once during a campaign stop. That's not going to the border. And obviously, the situation has worsened under his watch. So, Congressman, we're going to keep a spotlight on it. We've got more of this breaking, developing story that we reported a moment ago, and we will talk with you soon. Thanks very much, Congressman Buddy Carter, for joining us this morning. Almost 2 million people entered the U.S. illegally in the last year, ending on September 30th. Border Patrol says people who are repeatedly crossing the border are skewing those numbers. They account for about 900,000 of those encounters. Border Patrol says the amount of crossings dipped slightly from August to September of this year. Now look at this. A massive organized caravan of migrants storming through a blockade of Mexican security forces. They're heading into Mexico and heading north towards our border. Retired Major General Michael McGuire is with us. Uh, he is the National Guard Association chair. Sir, you got National Guardsmen at the border in Texas. What do they do when that caravan arrives? What action can they take? Well, good morning, Stuart. Thanks for having me. Uh, 
I think your lead-in uh, proved that uh, Biden is completely derelict in his duty. I have never seen anything like this. As you mentioned, I retired in April of this past year, uh, had the opportunity to deploy guardsmen to the border four times, and still, with over 200,000 a month the last two months and nearly 200,000 apprehensions, those are the people that have been caught, uh, record numbers. Biden has spent zero federal dollars on this issue. He is derelict in his duty. Uh, relative to what can be done, uh, we need immediately to get the federal government to fund through DHS and the DOD, the National Guard to surge guardsmen to the border, assist Border Patrol, ICE, and Immigration Services to stop this. Uh, it has gone from a crisis to a complete emergency here in Arizona. Do they carry loaded guns? Uh, that's up to the uh, commanding generals uh, that are involved at the time and rules for use of force in support of law enforcement agents. Uh, if they are posted uh, and deputized, they can do that. Uh, but right now, Stuart, I want every American to understand this. Biden has not spent a single dollar on federal assistance to any of the three primary law enforcement agencies that should be doing this. We have a complete invasion happening at the south border. Uh, in a small border patrol station here in Arizona, in NACO, they have seen apprehensions this year of 164 nations. There's only 189 out there, Stuart. I'm not sure if the other 25 didn't get the memo. But, but there are signs that this is backfiring on the president politically. An open border it may have been popular during the election from the left, but now we've got an open door, border. Hundreds of thousands are coming through, and I don't think that's popular. Do you, I mean, do, have you seen a decline in political support for the president because of what's going on there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I threw my hat in the ring, Stuart, to run for the U.S. Yep. Senate for exactly that reason. And I need all those great patriots out there to go visit my website at electmic.com. The reason I'm doing it is because there's only one order of business that has to occur. In the Senate and in the House, they need to demand immediately uh, the funding to build the wall, surveil it and enforce it. This administration literally bought out the contractors here in Arizona to not complete that project. And this lawless behavior is, is, not, is not playing well politically. The independents in this state have had enough. Uh, you're going to see a huge switch, and we're going to uh, remove Mark Kelly from office in uh, November of 22 and gain back control of the U.S. Senate. Major General McGuire, thank you very much for being with us this morning. I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Joe. To the border, it is not just Texas feeling the impact of illegal migration. Arizona also getting hit hard as migrant numbers are ramping up. Uh, we told you from the border that border sources told me they were making 5,000 arrests a week. Now, Yuma Mayor Douglas Nicholas says, quote, the rise in undocumented immigration is stressing health care and the nonprofits that help migrants in Yuma. He's worried that the situation will only get worse. The Center for Immigration Studies calling this the next Del Rio mass migration crisis. The city seeing nearly a 2,400 percent increase in migrants from August 2020 to August 2021. Joining me right now is Texas Attorney General, I'm sorry, Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich. A.G. Burnovich, thanks very much for being here. Talking a lot about Thank Texas you, this morning, but of course it is now Arizona in the crosshairs. Tell us what you're seeing. Well, we are seeing a record amount of people illegally entering our country because, as you know, the Biden administration has decriminalized and incentivized people coming here. And it's one of the reasons why both Arizona and Texas are in the forefront of filing lawsuits against the Biden administration, trying to hold them accountable. As you know, Maria, we've sued Biden, trying to force him to build the wall. We've sued him over the Remain in Mexico policy. We've sued him over his eliminating the public charge rule, which is basically incentivizing people coming here. So as a result of these policies, we're gonna see more than two million people illegally cross our southern border. And as a former prosecutor, spent much of my career in law enforcement, my big concern is there's a record amount of fentanyl coming into our country. Two milligrams of fentanyl can kill a person. And just last week at, on I-19 in Tucson, we seized more than 50 pounds in one stop. That's enough to kill the entire city, New York City. Unbelievable. Yeah, well, we had 93,000 overdoses in America just in the last year, largely due to fentanyl. Why is fentanyl being pushed in this country? I mean, obviously, the underlying chemicals are made in China. Why are they pushing a deadly drug into this country? 
to kill well, off Americans? I think you know the answer. Well, I think you know the answer to that. I think that China sees this as an opportunity to, you know, destabilize and undermine America, and the cartels see it as a way to make a lot of money. I mean, make no mistake about it. I mean, the cartels are now pushing more drugs in this country than CVS and Walgreens combined. I mean, and as a result of that, our kids, our nieces, nephews um, are going to be devastated um, because there's, we know, yeah. I know as a prosecutor, the price of fentanyl is falling. That means more addictions. It means more crime in our inner cities. And shame on President Biden. Shame on people like Cartel Kelly that are doing absolutely nothing because this is no longer a cr crisis. It's a catastrophe. And it's not only just here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. This is coming to a city near you very shortly. Well, we are just back from the border a couple of weeks ago, and at that time, I reported that the cartels are exploiting children. We had an exclusive new reporting this morning that uh, an arrest over the weekend had a 16-year-old getting arrested. He didn't have a driver's license. He was going 70 miles an hour until the truck tipped over in this ditch. When he was arrested uh, or apprehended, it, it was found that there were 13 illegals in that truck. Uh, so we are seeing uh, the cartels advertise on TikTok, uh, and uh, they are exploiting children to be the getaway cars, American citizens. Now there's a massive new organized migrant caravan on the way to the southern border, surging past Mexican forces, trying to stop it over the weekend. The organizers are calling out the Biden administration, saying, at least with Donald Trump, we knew what we had. With Biden, we don't know. What are you expecting from this new caravan? And, and is it the gotaways that are in Arizona or, or the apprehended ones? What? It's it's both, and here here's the problem. You know, you were just down at the border, and I was just there again last week. Is that there are literally thousands of people coming in as they they're they're, they're give ups. They're literally giving up because they know there's there's going to be no consequences. Um, they don't even have to claim asylum anymore. The only thing they're claiming is you know luxury hotel rooms with no resort fees. And but what what is, what should worry people are the gotaways in Tucson. The Tucson sector is now number one in the country. There are thousands of these gotaways every week now going on, and these are the people. That that don't want to be caught. So they're getting in high speed chases. Yeah. These are people that are being enabled by the cartels. Terrible. Literally, people that are rapists, killers, murderers, that are just being released or led into our community. Shame on the Biden administration. Yeah. Listen, Shame on Congress for not doing anything. AG, people also want to know what's going on in Arizona. What can you tell us about the status and timing of the election audit in Arizona? Well, as you know, Maria, no one did more for election integrity this last cycle. I argued literally at the U.S. Supreme Court in Brnovich v. DNC to allow states like Arizona and Georgia and other places to enact common sense election integrity measures. So where is the it? Senate has sent over, so the Senate sent over an audit. We supported the Senate's right to do the audit. And just as I respected the Senate's process during the audit, I hope the folks pre realize as a prosecutor, we, we, you can take away people's livelihoods, life, liberty, property. It's important for us to get it right. So we are going through the process. We are still doing it. We're doing an investigation. We're following up on some of the stuff the Senate uh, provided us, and we're in the process of doing an investigation. And as a prosecutor, I'm not like the clowns in New York. I can't just say a bunch of stuff and, you know, reach a conclusion and then try to find facts. It's all about where do the facts and evidence lead you. So, so what is your timing then, A.J.? Um, it's important to get it right, uh, not fast. And so we're still, there's a lot of stuff that we still have to go through. I mean, the Senate still hasn't even provided us a complete report. So I think it would be, you know, premature. And as I said, it's an ongoing investigation. And learned a long time ago as a prosecutor that, you know, you're limited legally and ethically, which you can say. So I just assure you that we're going to do the right thing in the right way. And it's important for us to get it right. Okay. We will check back with you in a little bit to see where you are on it then. Mark Brnovich, thanks very much for being here this morning. It, yeah, I know. I understand on the infrastructure deal, and I know that there is a, a real push to get that done sooner rather than later. But look, even there, uh, there are problems. There's not one cent in that bill for border security. And also, I was told this weekend that the uh, multi-billions that are earmarked for Amtrak it's not really for Amtrak the tracks. It's for the pension fund at Amtrak. Is that right? It's the pension fund, not the tracks. So that's not infrastructure.
Well, it's my understanding that there's money in there for the Gateway Tunnel, which is important for economic development and for New mm. York. But you're right about border security. And uh, I thank you for mm. the extensive coverage that you've been uh, putting on what's happening at the border. And as a, somebody who has seen fentanyl increasing deaths uh, in my community, as so many yeah. others across America, we need to stop what is occurring at the southern border. And uh, not just well, that, but, you know, suspected terrorists that are attempting to come uh, to America. Right. Well, that's what I want to ask you about, because the Department of Homeland Security has secured a contract to build a nearly half a million dollar taxpayer funded security fence around President Biden's Delaware Beach home. So, I mean, he's taxpayers are paying for this new fence around his beach house. Meanwhile, all construction on the U.S. southern border wall has been halted amid a record number of migrant apprehensions, Congressman. We've got 1.7 million apprehensions year to date. And that doesn't even include the gotaways we just talked about, where they're exploiting kids to be the getaway cars to take gotaways into the city of Houston, among others. And yet taxpayers are paying for a new fence around Joe Biden's house. What is this about? <laughs> This is the height of hypocrisy, but it, once again, they are showing Americans that barriers do work. And by the way, we're still paying for that border barrier. It's just not actually being constructed because he canceled the contracts. The reality is, is that Americans should be very concerned what they're seeing. Not only are these young people being explo uh, exploited to be the getaway cars, but we're seeing record number of fentanyl coming over our border. DEA has warned that this is what is causing these deaths. This is where it's coming from. So Joe Biden Biden is on the side of the drug cartels, not the American citizens. And when it comes to uh, national security, you know, 52 uh, individuals with al-Qaeda ties were approaching the United States border. They got stopped in Panama. The Panamanian uh, foreign minister has uh, informed Congress. And what is Joe Biden doing? He continues to leave the border open, knowing that we have even caught individuals on the terrorist watch list. I'm deeply concerned about our national security. I'm deeply concerned about the amount of fentanyl coming over our border. The Remain in Mexico policy cannot get reinstated quick enough. But we need to get serious about building these barriers at our southern border and stopping this. Yeah, well, I, hopefully they will follow the Supreme Court on that Remain in Mexico, because my sources on the ground in Texas tell me they're not reinstating Remain in Mexico. It's just not happening. They're blowing off the law. But you heard Joe Biden last week in the town hall make up a story that he was at the border. We have no record of that, that he was ever at the border as vice president, as senator, and certainly not as commander in chief, where he has reversed all of the security policies in place. Congressman, we're going to keep following this, and we thank you for joining me this morning. Nicole Maliotak is joining us. Well, it won't be the first time. Yeah, it won't be the first well, time that President Biden says one thing and then does something else. Thank you. Mm, well, all right, we'll be right back. Stay with us.